Okay, so so what's the panoply, let's say, of of predictors that we know of? Well, um, and so these are determinants of lifetime success, as far as I can tell. Uh, and I would you know I think about this because I'll tell you what it is that you need to do to be successful. Some of these things aren't so malleable, but others are things that you can work on. Well, IQ, well, that's a rough one because there's no evidence, as far as I can tell, that you can do a damn thing about your IQ. I was just reading a paper by Dan Simon today. Uh, it's a relatively recent review. Dan Simon did the Invisible Gorilla stuff, and he was looking, because there's all these companies that claim that these online brain training exercises can produce cognitive improvements, and he reviewed the literature again. And I've reviewed that literature like six times in the last 15 years because I keep hoping that someone will crack the problem, but it's always the same answer. It's like you do brain training games, you get better at the game, a lot better at that game. You get slightly better at similar games, but distal games that are still heavily cognitively loaded doesn't affect your performance at all. Zero. None. So the, the, the issue of how to raise IQ, man, that's a killer. No one knows how to do it. I can tell you how to stop your IQ from decreasing as you get older. That's not so bad because it does that. Uh, fluid IQ decreases from the time you're 20 and, and pretty rapidly. It's uh, physical health is the best preventative. So exercise, physical exercise. Weirdly enough, you know, you think, well, why? Well, your brain uses oxygen like mad, right? And it, and, it, and it needs to be kept clean and well oxygenated. And physical exercise, both, both uh, like weightlifting, so anaerobic, anaerobic, anaerobic and aerobic exercise, both seem to be very, very effective at staving off cognitive declines across the lifespan. So that's a really useful thing to know because that's the only thing we know that does that. So then the next best predictor of lifetime success is conscientiousness. Well, so, and of the, of the two aspects of conscientiousness, say orderliness and, and industriousness, the better predictor is industriousness. So the question is, well, what can you do about your industriousness? And the answer to that is, well, that's kind of rough too, because there's a strong genetic component. But you can work on micro habits with regards to your conscientiousness. And I think the best micro habits, this is partly to do with this future authoring program processes. I think the best thing you can do with regards to your conscientiousness is to set up some aims for yourself, goals that you actually value. And the future authoring program helps people do that. And basically it does a, a situational analysis of, it helps you do a situational analysis of your life more than a psychological analysis, I would say. And so, so the questions are something like, well, all right, you're going to have to put some effort into your life and you need to be motivated to do that. And so what are the potential sources of motivation? Well, you could think about them in, in the big five manner. You know, if you're extroverted, you want friends. If you're agreeable, you want an intimate relationship. If you're disagreeable, you want to win competitions. If you're open, you want to engage in creative activity. If you're high in eroticism, you want security. Okay, so those are all sources of potential motivation that you could draw on, that you could tailor to your own, you know, your own personality. But then there are dimensions that you want to consider your life across. And so we ask people about, well, you know, if you could have your life the way you wanted it in three to five years, if you were taking care of yourself properly, you know, what would you want from your friendships? What would you want from your intimate relationship? How would you like to structure your family? What do you want for your career? Well, how are you going to use your time outside of your job? And how are you going to regulate your mental, physical, mental and physical health? And maybe also your drug and alcohol use, because that's, that's a good place to auger down, you know, because alcoholism, for example, wipes out, you know, five to 10% of people. So you want to keep that under control. And then, and then, so maybe, you know, you, you, you develop a vision of what your life, what you would like your life to be. And that associates the, so the goal, well, once the goal is established, and then you break down the goal into micro processes that you can implement, the micro processes become rewarding in proportion, in relation to their uh, causal association with the goal. And that tangles in your your incentive reward system. You know, we talked about the dopaminergic incentive reward system, and that's the thing that keeps you moving forward. And the way it works is that it works better if it produces positive emotion when it can see you moving towards a valued goal. Okay, well, what's the implication of that? Better have a valued goal, because otherwise you can't get any positive motivation working out. And so the more valuable the goal, in principle, the more the micro processes associated with that goal start to take on a positive charge. 
And so what that means is, well, you get up in the morning and you're excited about the day. You're ready to go. And so as far as I can tell, what you do is you specify your long-term ideal. Maybe you also specify a place you want to stay the hell away from so that you're terrified to fail as well as excited about succeeding, because that's also useful. You specify your goal. You, you do that. You do that in some sense, as a unique individual, you want, to, you want to specify goals that make you say, oh, if that could happen as a consequence of my efforts, it would clearly be worthwhile. Because the question always is, why do something? Because doing nothing is easy. You just sit there and you don't do anything. That's real easy. The question is, why would you ever do anything? And the answer to that has to be because you've determined by some means that it's worthwhile. And then the next question might be, well, where should you look for worthwhile things? And one would be, well, you could consult your own temperament. And the other would be, well, you kind of look at how, look at what it is that people accrue that's valuable across the lifespan. Look, look what, so you do a structural analysis of the subcomponents of human existence. And I already did that. You need a family, you need friends. Like you don't need to have all these things, but you better have most of them. Family, friends, career, educational goals, plans for you know, time outside of work, uh, attention to your mental and physical health, etc. You know, those are, that's what life is about. And if you don't have any of those things, well, then all you've got left is misery and suffering. So that's, that's, a, bad, that's a bad deal for you. So 